Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.12 There was never a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Saraṭavarṣṇī Krishna asks the question, O oh my friend Arjuna, when one grieves over the death of a dear person, what is the object of his love? Is it the body or the soul? In the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.50 it is said, Sarvesham api bhutanam pripa svatmeva valabaha O King, for all living entities, the Atma or Self is certainly the most dear. According to this statement of Sri Sukadeva Goswami, it is the Atma that is the only object of love. Although there is a difference between Ishvara and the Jiva, both types of Atma are eternal and free from death. This is so even though there is a difference between the Supreme Soul and the individual soul. Therefore, it is not the soul that is the object of grief. For this reason only, Sri Krishna is speaking this verse beginning with Na Tva Evaham. It is not true that I, Param Atma, the Supreme Self, did not exist in the past. Certainly I existed. In the same way you, the individual Atma, also existed in the past, as did the Atma of all these kings. The possibility of the soul not existing prior to its existence in his present body is refuted by this statement. Similarly, it is also not true that you, these kings, and I will not continue to exist in the future. We will all continue to exist. Thus, it has been proven that the soul is indestructible. In this regard, the Katha Upanishad 2.2.13 states, Nityo nityanam chetanash chetanam eko bahunam yo vidatati kaman. There is one supreme eternal amongst all eternals, one supreme consciousness among all conscious beings. Although he is one, he fulfills the desires of all. Sar Artavarshini Prakash Kariti The soul's contact with the gross body is called birth, and separation from it is called death. When the soul is situated in the gross body, a person has loving dealings with others. But ignorant persons, who consider the gross body to be the self, do not realize that the real self is not material, and thus, when a soul disappears from a body, they become absorbed in grief. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Parikshit Maharaj asked Srila Shukadev Goswami, O Brahmana, Sri Krishna was not born to the parents of the other cowherd boys. How was it possible for those parents to have such unparalleled love for him? A love they did not even have for their own children. In response to this, Srila Shukadev Goswami says, O King, for all living entities, one's own self is the most dear. Although objects that are separate from oneself, such as a son, wealth, or a house, are dear to oneself, they are not as dear as the self itself. The affection one has for them is secondary to the affection one has for one's own self. In other words, there is a difference between I and mine. The amount of affection a person has for the objects he possesses is not the same as the affection 
that he has for his own self. Those who consider the body to be the self do not feel that anything related to the body, such as a house, a wife or a son, is as dear to them as their own body. And even though a person's body is the object of his affection, it is not as dear to him as the self, because when the body becomes old, the desire for survival still remains strong. This is due to one's excessive attachment to one's self. Sri Krishna is the very self of the self, and for that reason he is every soul's most dear object. The world which is related to Krishna is also dear, but not the most dear. Krishna is the object of the word I, because he is the soul of all souls. And anything related to Krishna, such as the universe, is the object of the word mine. That is why Krishna is so dear to the cowherd boys. The dialogue between Yagyavalkya and Maitreyi in Briyat Aranyaka Upanishad 2.4.5 verifies the above statements. Therein it is said, The great sage Yagyavalkya is saying to Maitreyi, No living entity loves another for the other's satisfaction. Only for one's own satisfaction does the husband love his wife. The wife loves her husband. The father loves his son. And the son loves his father. A person is dear not for someone else's satisfaction, but for the happiness and satisfaction of one's own self.